Okay, so continuing on with the home buying process course, another important thing you really want to consider is choosing a realtor. You don't wanna just choose anyone, maybe not the first one that pops up. Sometimes asking a friend for a referral can be a great way because they can tell you, if, you know, if they liked them or how they answered their phone or how devoted they were to working with you, but maybe you don't have anyone that just bought a bought or sold a home with a realtor. So hopefully this part of the course will help you. So some of the things to consider, I personally feel they should have at least three years experience. That is because there is so much to learn. Real estate school just teaches you the basics. Now, not to say someone with less than three years couldn't be wonderful, but of course, someone with at least three years has gone through a few deals, knows how to help negotiate. If an issue comes up, that's the huge one there. They will know how to handle it. Some agents do join a team right out the gate and they would have the support of their team. So again, that could make a difference in helping you get the best deal, the best property suited for you. Here's a huge one, communication skills. If your agent isn't picking up or responding to your messages right out the gate, if you're getting a bad gut feeling, maybe they're not going to be the best agent. If they can't even do that in the beginning when it's important to, for you to find it, when you're still looking for an agent, they're only going to get worse as it goes on. I deal with this all the time. I don't know if it's the hobbyist agents, the part-time ones, whatever it is, but think about this is a huge investment. Make sure you get an agent whose communication skills are top notch because if they start aggravating the other agent, the listing agent, you're going to have problems there too. And you won't even know it's occurring. Sometimes we get an agent and they're just snippy or rude or don't respond or trying to keep everything going. And it's just makes it hard to work with the agent. So going in, maybe that would, you know, deter your, your offer to getting accepted, who knows, or, you know, it's also so important, you know, time is of the essence a lot of times, especially if it's a hot market or a hot property, maybe something comes on the market and you can't get a hold of your agent. Somebody else has an agent on top of it and swoops it out from under you. Find an agent that also knows local market knowledge. I oftentimes on my listings will get an agent from two hours down south asking me questions about the property and then want me to go show it because they say, I don't know, they're doing something else. No, they're just too lazy to drive up here. What they should do is refer that buyer out to an agent that's already up here that knows the market. These agents are even too lazy to drive up here for the home inspection or to do the final walkthrough or just anything. They're just called commission breath and I cannot stand that. So get one in the area. If it's too far out, the agent should just suck it up and say, listen, this is what I do. Sometimes I get people from YouTube calling me and they're like, yes, um, I would like to, let's see, I would like to see properties in Jacksonville. I go, listen, I would love to show them to you. It's a great area, but it's not my, it's not my expertise. I'm going to have to refer you out, but I have great agents up there, which is true. Now I'm going to get you somebody that's amazing up there that can work, knows the area, who's won't, you know, put you in an area that you're not wanting, knows the market up there. Just, there's just so much behind the scenes going on that I would not want to represent you in an area. I'm not the local expert anywhere in central Florida, though, especially the greater Daytona beach area. You know, I got your back part-time versus full-time agent. I would ask your agent again, right out the gate. Do you do this full-time? That will help with the communication skills because if they're at their day job or wherever their other job is, bartending or whatever, then you're going to have a hard time getting a hold of them. They're not committed and they're not as available. They normally have less experience if they're part-time as well. And they're not doing this. They're not having the time to go to classes, take extra schooling, be in the daily grind of doing real estate. I live, breathe, eat real estate. And if they're not doing that, they may not be 
the agent for you. They're limited to meeting and showing you properties again, which can be a huge drawback, especially if you're in a competitive market, you have to respond to things. Sometimes it's crucial. You can't wait for them to get off their job or go on their lunch break. They have to be full time. I'm sorry if an agent that's part time watching this, I'm sorry, because the other thing is if it's part time because it's a hobby, really, do you want a hobbyist <laughs> making the trans the biggest transaction possibly of your life? You want someone that's it's fun. It's a hobby. Oh, I can't even begin to tell you how aggravating it is to work with a part time agent. Mainly the communication skills are definitely lacking and the knowledge. Sometimes I just try and take the deal over in the most friendly way and just let them take their paycheck. Just please move on. <laughs> so again, make sure they're full time. I mean, this is a full time job. It's, you know, it's not for the part timers or hobbyists. Usually get someone that's devoted a hundred percent or at least giving it their all. Maybe many of you have heard this interchangeably realtor versus real estate agent. Basically, we're all real estate agents, but then you get some of us, well, the majority of us actually are also realtors. And it means we're a member of the National Association of Realtors, which is NAR. And to use that title, an agent, we pay a lot for that. <laughs> But we also hold us to a specific code of ethics and we get much more access to training and we can promote properties way better than if we weren't paying for to become a realtor. It is something ongoing and the designations and training and everything adds up to, I truly feel it's definitely well worth it again, because this is my full-time job and I always I'm looking to go above and beyond for all my buyers and sellers. All right. I touched on this earlier. Definitely find an agent that's a neighborhood expert. Now, I'm going to toot my own horn. I don't care because I take a lot of pride in my real estate. I do tons of research on neighborhoods all the time, especially if a new listing pops up or it's a neighborhood I haven't been in. Now, I've been in the Daytona Beach area since 93, so most neighborhoods I do know. But if not, especially when I'm going to do a video, I research it some more. I'll go through some open houses. I'll go preview some homes. I like to be a neighborhood expert in all the areas in my local market, which I pretty much, again, since living here since 93, I used to own a real estate company and I used to manage a couple hundred rentals. When you do property management, which I don't do no more. But when you do property management, you really get to know these areas because you're going into neighborhoods maybe normally you would have never went into. So I ha I can, when I tell you I'm a neighborhood expert, most of the areas I truly am. Again, you know, if somebody says I would want to buy a home in Jacksonville, I would uh, refer them out. I'm not a neighborhood expert. It's too far for me to keep going up there to give you the best I can. But by being a neighborhood expert, we have more in depth about the local market trends, property values, schools, amenities, community features. We can provide valuable ins insights into the pros and cons of a particular neighborhood. And often we have a strong network and connections within the community, which can be beneficial for finding off market listings or potential buyers when I list properties for my clients as well. Okay, this is one of my favorite is working with new builders. And if you are looking or even considering working with a new builder, get an agent that has experience in that. I love working with new builders. As soon as we get a new one in town or a new subdivision, I get out there. I know that area. I want to know my local market. We are expanding in Daytona still. We, As of this recording, we still have... Plenty of new builds going up. I get to know the builders. This way, when I'm representing one of my buyers, I can identify potential problems before they arise. I've done this a bunch of times. Most builders here, though, are pretty good, but still, stuff comes up. It's good to have someone that does this all the time. I can negotiate things like upgrades or other hidden costs because I will know what they are. If you go in unrepresented, you probably won't know what they are to even ask for them or if you're with an agent that's not used to working with new builders. 
new home builders. I know what the builders are willing to do to get the home sold, depending on the market. And an experienced agent understands the ins and outs of the process. Let me haggle with the builder to get the best deal for you. So you might be again wondering, what do we do? Like, why do I want a realtor or a real estate agent? Well, we negotiate on your behalf. Again, this is where once some experience comes in, because if you never negotiated a deal with these other agents, or maybe directly working with the seller, you need a little experience behind you. Get the best price for your home, advise you on surprises that might arise, I'll help navigate the buying process with minimal stress. This little mini course hopefully helps as well. And of course, I'm always available to answer any additional questions or you can comment below. We reduce the chances of landing in a legal issue with the buyer or the seller and handle and review all the legally binding agreements. We're not attorneys, but we know our legal limits. We need to take lots of classes. We always have to take keep up on the real estate laws. And that's why, again, the experience can really, really help. So in summary, a good real estate agent can help you avoid delays, costly mistakes, and legal issues. A good real estate agent should have experience, knowledge, and relationships. They should also be personable, honest, and confident in their abilities. And if you're thinking of moving to the greater Daytona Beach area, do not hesitate to reach out. I would love to represent you.